What's up, Bulldogs? I'm Ted. And I'm Tony. Welcome back to another episode of TV Judge. The final episode of TV Judge. This is crazy. And um, we just wanted to start off the final announcements for the TV Judge by thanking our seniors. The seniors on our crew is John Monette and Gabe Campbell. We love you guys and we wish you guys the best in 2023 and beyond. Now, to the announcements. We decided that this week, as it was the final episode of TV Judge, we wanted to do a year review. <laughs> this has been a wild year, so let's get into it. First up, the world was blasted by several different ecological disasters. A Greek wildfire, Hurricane Ida, and a Haitian earthquake all destroyed their various parts of the world, including the East Coast, the Haitian Islands, and Greece. As well as this, global emissions must peak by 2025 to keep the world under the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold um, sent out by the United, the United Nations. As well as this, many different geopolitical conflicts occurred, such as the assassination of the Haitian president, the evacuation of Afghanistan and the subsequent Taliban takeover, as well as the invasion of Ukraine. Finally, a bunch of other large problems, including NFTs, the COVID Delta variant, the Johnny Depp trial, and Elon Musk buying Twitter for $44 billion. Bulldogs, this has been a wonderful year. Thank you for all of the support that you have given to us. Thank you for viewing our video. And finally, thank you for being you. From the little moments, like when Danny co-hosted. To the big ones, when we went around asking questions and getting answers. Thank you. Thank you. See, See you, you next year, Bulldogs. Well, another year has come and gone. We don't have a lot to show for it except for our tears and really not much else. But. Nevertheless, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate all of our victories and everything that we've accomplished over this school year. Come with us. Let's go, let's go celebrate. The coolest thing is just being back in COVID. It's a great feeling not having to deal with all the same things last year, not having an online class, all those other things. Being a freshman last year, we didn't have like a full school year in the building. So uh, just like the first full school year in the building was pretty, pretty fun. This school year's highlight for me was definitely getting closer with my friends and being able to be at school all five days a week. My year's highlight was probably the winter's dance. Prom. It was just nice to come back from a break from all the other dances that we missed. And it was just a, it was a good time. Because at prom, we got to go to the U. And it was the new building that was part of the U construction most recently. Baseball senior night has to definitely be a highlight. Baseball season. A baseball trip to Kanab. We went one and three, but it was really fun hanging with the team. Being a part of the softball team this year. Going to California with the cross country team. And soccer state semifinals. Football games. Football games at the beginning of the year were really fun. I really enjoyed football season. <laughs> Fantastic. Welcoming. Community. Social. Community. Community. Everyone has just been super welcoming to me since I've been a freshman. It's not a big school, so you get to know everybody really well. There's a lot of ways you can interact with classmates and people who you probably wouldn't have met on your own. Educational. Engaging. Challenge. They provide a very good education system here. Inclusive. Changing. There are tons of activities everywhere on campus for people to do, people with all interests. Every year that I've been here, it's something new has happened and each year is just kind of different. Kind. Amazing. Fun. 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 The basketball game versus Juan Diego at Judge, even though we lost, just the atmosphere was really fun. There, there were a ton of people there. It was one of the first games we actually got a good student section, so that was fun. I've always had fun at the Pepper alleys. Pepper alleys. Pepper alleys we had. First um, pepper alley. It was very fun. 
They have uh, everyone go into the, the gym area, the outside on the field, and then we all do some fun stuff. And it's just like, it's really interesting to watch and it's pr pretty fun. Actually, it was pretty fun when the fire alarm went off. The fire drill one time during New Media, it was a great class. It was a fun class and it was a fun way to end the day. It was cool being there for Taya's game when she set the record for like most points in Utah. All the tall with the layup, no good. I'm just gonna miss the small and welcoming community that I get at Judge and the familiarity of the building. I think just kind of the environment of it. I've gotten pretty used to this place. I've been here for four years. Uh, I think that'll just kind of be the biggest thing. I think for everyone going to college is the fact that it's a whole new world. The great friends I've made and also the wonderful faculty. Huge thing. Graduating because like I'm gonna be a senior next year. Like I could finally get out of high school. You know, I mean this school is great and all, but kind of want to go to college now. I'm really looking forward to just kind of focusing on on colleges and getting that part out of uh, out of my high school year. It's gonna be interesting being an upperclassman. I'm excited for my senior year and playing baseball as well. I'm looking forward to uh, just hanging out with friends, hanging out with friends, and like sports. I think I'm going to play golf next year too, so I think that's going to be really fun. TV judge, honestly. TV judge as well. Uh, the baseball season, I hope to be a varsity player next year. I'm pushing myself to do some higher academic level classes. Get a good grade. Yeah. Ow. Hi Bulldogs. Didn't see you there. It's been one heck of a year. So much has changed but I'm so grateful for all of our experiences and I can't wait to see you guys next year. See you next year, Bulldogs, and have a great rest of your summer. School year. Hi, I'm Adira Jen. I'm Marika Collins. <laughs> I'm Myra and Taria. <laughs> I'm Taylor. And, and we're, we're the Lady Bulldogs! For me, just keep working hard. I started off on the Frost team and had to work my way up. Just um, be determined. Keep working hard. Yeah, I agree with her on that one. It's a, to play varsity is a very hard position to get to, and you just have to work through it and just show your dedication to your teammates and your coaches. Um, I would say just to really push yourself in practice, make your teammates better. Um, just always look forward to the next game and just always want to win. Yeah, love, love, love it. <laughs> Um, I would say that there's different kinds of leadership and to be aware of them all. Like you can be the leader that is positive and brings the positive energy or you can be the leader that is making sure everything is going according to like timelines during practice and all that stuff and so like you have a role like in every different aspect and really be appreciative of that. Take, take the fact that you have more than one person to lead for granted, because I feel like don't take it for granted. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, <laughs> no, that you have more than one person to leave. Yeah, you don't want to take that for granted. Taking it for granted is like you. Okay, yeah, do. whatever. Don't take it for granted. <laughs> no, I say take it for granted because if it's by yourself, then it's so much harder. You have all that pressure and everything, but having that, having the fact that you have other people, other seniors alongside with you the whole time, because I feel like us having so many captains made it so much easier to maintain the team and like keep that drama out and just kind of like keep everything on the level that we need it to be to, to win and be a great team as we are, so. And then, don't take it for granted. <laughs> don't take it for granted. It's like who you are when, it's like those little moments, like who you are when no, nobody's watching, like 
how much effort you put into something that all like is character building so the type of player you are on the basketball court like is the same the characteristics you bring to the game are the same as how you're going to live your life so if you're lazy then you're going to be a lazy person you should put a hundred percent into everything on and off the court and that um, things get tough in life, like especially I know this group from our freshman year to now, like we've been to the championship and we lost. Like we've gotten knocked out in earlier rounds. Like we have, like this is the first time we've been undefeated in our high school season. And like stuff like that happens, like the good and the bad. And you have to figure out within yourself and as a team, how to get over that and how to grow, so. Um, I would say just to fight through adversity on and off the court. Just always fight and be willing to um, get better and do better as a person. I guess. <laughs> yeah, this sport taught me to work for something bigger than myself and to know how that feels to have people depending on you and for you to put your own weight. And it's just, you know. Yeah, I feel oh, like one, one thing most definitely is mindset. Um, it's something that I will most definitely take. Like when you go in with the losing mindset, you're gonna you're gonna lose. That's because you went in there with that mindset. If you go in with the winning mindset, it's, you're gonna get it. It's more of like a mindset thing that I feel like will always stay with me. Honestly, like we've gone to school with each other like before high since, school. Since like kindergarten, me and Tay and Audio have gone to school together since like before. Yeah, since kindergarten, I've known Marika since like fifth and sixth grade. Same with Ang Wow. Like blood. What the heck? Like, I can't believe we made it this far. And I'm actually going to miss playing with these guys, like, so much. What's a bulldog? Always oh, a bulldog! Hello, my name is Kareen Higgins. My main winter sport is skimo. People ask, what is skimo? Skimo is like backcountry skiing, but racing. It's basically taking adhesive skins, sticking them to the bottom of your skis, and hiking uphill with your skins on, heels unclipped and free, and then ripping skins, clipping in and skiing down in avalanche terrain. Skimo is a growing sport. When I first joined Silver Fork three years ago, there were only about 15 kids, and now there are over 45. Schema was just added to the 2020 Winter Olympics. Last weekend, the team went to Arapaho Basin for national team qualifiers. We were supposed to race the vertical, a race in which you only race uphill, Friday night, but... Okay, so the race was canceled. The race was postponed to 4.30 the next day, this time, it was 5 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, Kareem, keep it up. Right here. All right, Kareem, up and around the corner, guys. 300 more feet. You got this. Right here. The next day, we got up at 5.15 to race the individual, which is the endurance race, and it went pretty well. Overall, Silver Fork had around 20 podiums, and a good time had by all. Anyway, my team, Silver Fork, practices at Brighton two times a week, but yes! most of us go out more than that. It is a super fun community with kids ranging from age 10, 11, all the way up to 18. It's a unique dynamic because A, it's a co-ed sport, so girls practice with boys, race and train with boys, and B, due to its size, younger kids can train with older, more professional athletes. Also, we get some pretty fun skiing between the intervals. We are backcountry skiing, so we get access to much more than just resort skiers. If you're looking to get involved or just want to have a good time in the mountains, Every other Tuesday, Brighton holds the 
Tuesday night citizen series races and it's just where a bunch of locals come out and compete and just have a good time. And there's a raffle at the end with super cool prizes, so. I'm Dom Fazio and I'm a freshman running for sophomore core next year. I'm Belinda Hernandez Padilla and I'm a freshman. I'm John Witt running for re-election onto sophomore core. Hi, I'm Zach Farr. I'm a freshman and this is my second year running for student council. I am running because I like to be involved in school and I think it's a really good way to get to know people. So my main poster is the Dom Father, vote the Dom, and so my family's Italian and the, um, the, there's a movie called The Godfather and that's the head of the <laughs> Italian mob and they're also known as the Don. And so my name's Dom, so I changed it to put a little, little joke there for you guys. Um, one of the big differences from running this year and last year or earlier in this year is that it's a lot less intimidating because I've had, I've gotten to experience what Stuka was like for like a whole year basically. So um, like I know how it works and I'm not intimidated by the older kids anymore and I understand that my voice matters and that I get to, um, like people really take into consideration what I have to say. As a member of student council, I'm gonna, I wanna make sure that everyone like feels kindness. I know that's like really cliche, but like all cliches, it's the truth. <laughs> um, like kindness, I'm really into spreading kindness. On Wednesday, March 2nd, here at Judge, we had the Culture Fair, where various groups and clubs got together to show off the best of their culture. Each exhibit displayed some facts about who was included, history, and some even brought homemade food to sweeten their presentation. Here's a quick look at all the groups that participated. Uh, and what is your table? Uh, North Sudan and South Sudan. And um, what's that food called? We made um, sambusa. It's a fried fried egg roll with meat and vegetables inside. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything you want to tell me about the countries on the table? Um, South Sudan is a very unique country. It's the youngest country in our world and it has a beautiful culture as well as North Sudan. And I'm excited to teach you guys all about it today. All right, thank you. I'm, today I was speaking about the my Ojibwe tribe, or it's or a Native American tribe. Uh, yes. So this is my tr uh, flag or tribe's flag. It rep we ha on the outside we have the four corners, each representing a different season, as well as each season representing a lot of other things. And then the middle is a lotus because we are a tribe of Michigan. We believe, and, and at least there we believe it's something sacred. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So my table over here, this section right here is Peru. I have the Peruvian pattern flags. I have Peruvian shirt. This is the Peruvian team. This is the most famous player. I have more Peruvian pattern over here and just stuff that we wear. This is a very famous like um, bracelet that Peruvians wear. It's for good luck. It's like an amulet. That's the word. And then right here we have a couple of countries. We have Peru, Brazil, um, the DR. We have El Salvador and we have Colombia. And we kind of just wanted like to represent different Latin groups. Uh, well, I'm representing my Italian culture. Uh, my family is primarily Italian. So I just sort of got like an overall encompass of the Italian culture, including cars and music and food and, you know, when you, everything you think of when you think of culture. All right, and I noticed you have the, the Roman Empire right here. You want to say anything specific about that? Uh, so that's just part of our history. You know, Italy was the center of the Roman Empire. Uh, that's why Rome is still our capital. And this is just a map showing how far they truly spanned. Span. My table is about the Basque Country, which is a little region between France and Spain. The well-known parts of the Basque Country is the running of the bulls in Plamplona and probably the Guggenheim Muse Museum in Bilbao. We are here representing the queer community um, and we have information about our club as well as the um, queer community and its history.
So over here we have a lot of the history, the pride flag evolution has changed many times throughout the year. And then here we have information about the club as well as resources for queer students. And over here is some information about why queer liberation is still relevant today um, and a little bit more terminology. Thanks to everybody that participated.